Okay, we just covered diaphragmatic breathing and we touched a little bit on rib cage expansion. And I want to elaborate a little bit more on that so we can be not only clear about it, but also determine why we do this and, and how this benefits us as we sing. When we take our rib cage and we don't get, I said, our spine tipped and we don't breathe from our chest, not only does the diaphragm or is the diaphragm the engine that drives our ship, but we start to develop pillars, right? And what are pillars? Pillars are a consistent thing that happens that once we get control of our breath and it starts to go up through our chest and our neck and down in the throat and so forth and across the larynx or vocal folds, what happens is, is um, you build a consistency or a strong tower. And I like to describe this in this kind of way because I think it's important to really think about the voice in terms that you can understand that'll make sense, okay? I don't think about the high note as much as I think about where I'm placing the note on my vocal cords. We'll discuss this more as we go, but I think about this as pillars, and, and I, I like to use the example of a rocket ship, and we're gonna go through this more and more as we go. And the rocket ship has basically three stages, okay? We've got stage three on the bottom, you got stage two in the middle, and you got stage one at the top. And as this rocket ship goes up our elevator shaft, or our support mechanism for breathing, okay? As this thing goes up, as we start to go up in the notes, we actually drop away stage three and it moves away like this, which means that we take the weight and take that heavy thing that we're using from the bottom and we make it smaller. Hey, right? As we go up, we actually pare down the sound, right? And make it smaller or really consistent so that it doesn't splat and get away from us up top and get too big so that it locks the larynx down and keeps us from going higher and higher as we go. Now we're gonna cover this more and more, but so what this rib cage expansion does, it develops these pillars and these pillars are this rocket ship that, so we drop away stage three as we go up to a certain level in the voice. And as we go up even higher, we drop away stage two and we're left with stage one, okay? And then as we come back down the elevator shaft, we reconnect stage two, and then we reconnect stage three as we come back down the shaft, okay? Or the pillars, if you will. Now the floors themselves are gonna represent notes, musical notes on the scale. And we're gonna discuss vowel modifications and so forth and so on as we go. And it's gonna be uh, more advanced. We're gonna only cover so much this time, but we're gonna get into a much more advanced uh, uh, approach to this. But so understand and think of your, your, your torso and your chest and your, your solar plexus and your diaphragm and all that as being a tube that it carries this air and the air is gonna be consistent as we go. Now, one last thing about this that's also uh, important to note is that the whole objective is to eliminate moving targets. What are moving targets? Moving targets are those things that get in our way that every time we you know, wanna sing a certain high note and then one night it's there and the next night it's not there and sometimes half the night it's there and sometimes it's way better than other nights and sometimes you just can't hit it at all. These safety mechanisms build a consistency so that when you do them correctly, you'll be able to hit that note night after night after night without stressing and worrying about hitting the high note. We're going to also cover something called the psychology of singing. We're going to talk more about psyching yourself out and freaking yourself out for the high note. But for now, so that's what we're discussing for now for called pillars. And these pillars, again, are a tube of air that goes up the elevator shaft as we have our rocket ship that will start to talk about vowel modifications and so forth in order to help you better understand how to relieve tension as we go up the scale. I know this is a lot of information, all right? But if you go through it slowly with me and I'll walk you through it step by step, it'll make sense. You'll be able to practice this to the scales that you get, which um, is the audio portion of the DVD. Now I don't discuss these things on the audio portion. You need to apply what you're learning in the video to the audio portion and experiment yourself for your own voice because everyone's voice is different, okay?